Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hey, it's great to see you all again. How you doing, uh, Bill? I'm doing great. How you doing? Johnny. I'm doing good, too. Thanks for asking. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, it's hard to wake you. <laughs> hey, guys. It's good to see you all again. It's, I love getting together uh, because we talk about such important topics. Well, I have got a topic, I've got a topic that I would like to, to broach with you guys because uh, here in central part of North Carolina, I can only assume it's the same in California, although in California it might just be year-round. But we are you know, right here on the cusp of Speedo season. Mm -hmm. and uh, remind, remind, remind me not to come until it's over. Well... <laughs> You know, in Europe, it's always that. And, it, it, you know, around here, if you wear a Speedo, people think it's kind of gross. In Europe, my gosh, man, you go on a cruise line or something, all, all the guys are wearing Speedos, if that. And uh, it seems to be socially acceptable. Somehow, in Americans, we're kind of grossed out about that. But uh, anyway, uh, you know, we're, we're not that far from where everybody made our uh, uh, New Year's resolutions. One of the most popular New Year's resolutions, of course, is lose weight, get in shape. That kind of thing. And I just wanted to share with you guys a tip that for me it may not include a Speedo, just as a public service announcement to you. Don't want to frighten the children. Um, is intermittent fasting. And this, for me, has become a lifestyle. It is not a, quote, diet. But I wanted to lose weight. And I'm, my template for success, you know, success leaves clues. Whatever you want to do, whatever age you are, as we're celebrating Act Two, and for me, embracing the boom as far as a baby boomer, there are people who have done what you were thinking you want to do, and they have left a successful template for it. So my brother, who's six years older than I, lost 40 pounds doing the intermittent fasting. Wow. And this was recommended to him by his son-in-law, who's a doctor, my nephew-in-law, who's a doctor. And we watch some stuff on YouTube and stuff, and the weight comes off. And the beauty of it for me is it's not like you're doing keto and you're having to measure your ketones and you take these measurements and you can only have X number of grams of carbs a day and you're measuring. And it sounds like a lot of work and it's not ever sustainable. Uh, I, I, for the most part, I think it's not sustainable because here's how, here's how this kind of works at my house. I will say to my wife, I think we should go on the keto diet or I think we should go low carb. And she will say, I feel like baking. <laughs> and that's how that works. So I'll say, I'm, I'm going to go low carb. And the next thing I know, out comes a, you know, a loaf of bread or a thing of cookies or a cake or something like that. So if you'd like to, I can kind of explain what I'm doing with this inter intermittent fasting. And I am down... From February 1st, I started this for Lent, and it's become a lifestyle for me that I hope I don't get off of. And so what I do is, most people will eat, if you say you eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, so that's, if my math is correct, that's 21 meals a week. Am I right? Seven yeah, but, but don't, don't forget the, the in-between meal snacking. I've... I've almost <laughs> forgotten that. I have not totally forgotten that, but I will get to that. So okay. what I do is I eat 11 meals a week. And this, wow. you know, you can you can give or take however you want to do it. But for me, how I've jump-started this, this intermittent fasting for myself is I'll start, let's say, start on Mondays. Well, let's start on Sunday. Sunday, I will have lunch. So looking at noonish to one, maybe. But it'll be... And it's kind of boring and people kind of laugh at me. I'll take like a piece of deli ham and put it around some string cheese, nuke it for a minute, put some mustard on there. And then I'll take like a bag of frozen mixed vegetables or frozen cut broccoli, put it in a little, little bitty casserole dish, nuke that thing up for about five minutes, put olive oil on it, apple cider vinegar and salt and pepper and Mrs. Dash. And I'll eat that. And that will be my lunch, that and a can of sparkling water or something or some iced tea. And that's my lunch. Now, some people will think this is kind of cheating, but then at about four o'clock, five o'clock, I'll have like a porter or a dark beer out on the deck, catch a little vitamin D perhaps, 
have a have a little square of some sharp cheddar cheese. And then for dinner, we'll have something like maybe it might even be cereal with fruit on it, strawberries and blueberries. We love that. That that can be our dinner. Or Marianne will make us a salad with chicken or salmon or something on it, or it might even be steak and potatoes. But then I'll still have a low carb ice cream, like a low carb, uh, low, what is it called? Carb smart ice cream, chocolate. And I try to do that by say eight o'clock. So I have my window of eating in an eight hour window. Then I try to go at least 16 hours before I eat anything again. But on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I don't eat until that four or five o'clock snack, that beer with the piece of cheese. And I'm drinking water all that time, water and coffee I can have. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I don't really eat, eat until four or five o'clock. Tuesdays and Thursdays, I allow myself a lunch. And then on weekend, lunch and dinner, and then a little snack there in the middle of the afternoon. So I've knocked out 10 meals, basically. Something like that, right? From 21 meals a week to 11 meals a week. Well, no wonder, no wonder you lost weight. Well, yeah, you lose weight. Obviously, it's uh, you know you're you're curbing that caloric intake. But guys, I I must tell you, other than the the routine baby boomer kind of space on something, I feel my mental acuity is better and my energy, my physical energy is much much better. So and, so and, you know, uh, Bill, I, for for the purposes of. Uh, Making sure that all the lawsuits get directed to Bill. Uh, you shouldn't uh, even attempt to do this without speaking to your doctor. You, and you could speak to Bill Jordan's nephew. Is that your nephew? He's, he's a doctor. Yeah, he's a doctor. He, he could, could use the talk, business. So he could use the business. Does he, maybe he does telemedicine. But uh, having said that, and uh, now reiterating that you should not try any of these things without checking with a doctor, I've actually used that. I like every diet, like every, actually, this is more a lifestyle than a diet. Exactly. It is okay. not a You've tried no, every diet there is, diet. haven't you, Art? Uh, well, uh, no, actually, I haven't. Um, uh, <laughs> but I'm thinking about, you know, that's what, five pounds? Getting <laughs> off your arm. Yeah. yeah. But short of that, um, uh, just to buttress what uh, uh, Bill is saying, uh, and that's, in essence, what you're doing is you're, in general, and there are a whole bunch of variations of it, but in general, you're fasting for 16 hours a day and allowing yourself to eat for eight hours a day. And what that does is that uh, helps reattune the body to not constantly be shoveling stuff in because uh, uh, human beings were born uh, to uh, eat when they can eat because they never knew where the next meal was coming from. But these days, you know, back in the cave days, which I know that uh, John and Bill, you remember, Back Absolutely. in the cave days, you just had to eat it when it came in. Ooh, 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 sure, ooh, sure, sure, sure. Well, you know, we and we fall into that habit of I get up, so it's time for breakfast. Right, oh, but here's a, here's okay, a now trick. Now it's time for lunch. Oh, you know, it's six right. o'clock. But time this is dinner. what makes it relatively easy, is that eight hours of that fasting period is when you're asleep. And if you're the, smart. And the way <laughs> I do it is is uh, basically I'll make sure that I don't eat anything after seven o'clock at night. And uh, then at seven in the morning, that's 12 hours. Okay, a couple of still hours awake, then being asleep. And then by seven o'clock in the morning, that's 12 hours. I only have another four hours. So I can start chowing down afternoon sometime till about right. seven. So I have an eight hour window. And the basic things about it is don't deny yourself anything. Of course, you have to watch it. You don't just gouge it in and pile your exactly. plate that high. But if you have a normal exactly. meal, you'll find out that you're probably not hungry. Now, other people exactly. might want to eat in the morning and then stop eating at 2 o'clock or something like that. Exactly. And there's a, exactly. Ton, there's a ton of information available on the uh, Internet. Right. But Dr. Google is not a certified doctor. Okay? Right. So check with your own doctor. And if you don't and you actually believe everything you've heard here, sue Bill Jordan because he hasn't given a disclaimer yet other than his nephew said it was okay. Nephew says, all right. So, you know, here's the, here's the thing. I will describe this uh, to friends. They say, hey, you look like you've lost weight. And I, and I explain to them how I've done it. And I explain about the intermittent fasting. And they will say to me, oh, I can't do that. And I will say to them, you're exactly right. You know, it's that old saying, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. 
<laughs> You're right. So are you motivated out of desperation or inspiration? I kind of like being able to get into these clothes again. It's a little looser, and maybe I'm buying smaller sizes. I haven't done that yet. But I just feel better, guys. That's the best I can tell you. And as we get older, I just really think that we need to take mindful care of ourselves because I don't care if I, if I live to be 100. That's great. But I want a good quality of life living to be 100. By the way, I want to remind the audience that this is a perfect, perfect, perfect uh, routine for Bill because he still has shorts that he bought 40 years ago. And they're a little snug. But he they, doesn't have to worry they, about going shopping anymore. Well, you know what? They were getting snug, and then there's so many rips and tears, and they just kind of loosened right up. Okay. I have to wear a belt with them now. I know that John wants to say something, but the truth of the matter is that you just said something very prophetic, uh, Bill, as you always do. Uh, you have pathetic? some nug nougat. something pathetic? Yeah. Yeah, it's oh. pathetic. Really pathetic. Okay. All right. Uh, Pr prosthetic. But, uh, prosthetic, too. Uh, uh I, I don't want to go there. I had another thing I want to say. But okay. we just did an interview with um, uh, one of our other regular contributors, Steve Campbell. And if you take a look at his playlist, basically, he talks about he's our brain whisperer. And, and your mind believes everything that you tell it. And it doesn't make judgment. If you say, I can't do this, you, you can't do it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Okay. But if you say... I can do this, or I'm doing this, it doesn't argue with you either. So uh, it really, it's a, a state of mind. But uh, you do look uh, terrific, Bill. Now, that, that shirt, I've never seen that shirt on you before. You John, know, go ahead, jump in, John. I normally wear T-shirts. I, I got this shirt um, maybe about a month ago and had not put it on. Well, I tried it on when I got it home, uh, and it was kind of tight. And it's like, eh, even though it's kind of stretchy. But after doing this intermittent fasting stuff, it fits me like it fits me. It's it's just a great feeling. And I would encourage you, like you said, now, you know, Art, reminding you to talk to your doctor and stuff before you try intermittent fasting. And it will surprise you on those days, those days where I don't eat until dinner time or, like I say, four or five o'clock with a block of cheese and, you know, maybe a Mexican beer or something like that. Um, many days when I have waited that long to eat, I find that when I get to that time, I'm really not hungry. And you don't have that constant, that glucose, that, you know, the ups and then the crash and you want more and you get, you're not riding that sine wave of glucose in your body. You just, I'm, I can only tell you that I feel better and I have lost weight. I feel better physically and mentally and probably emotionally. And I, I don't know, I'm just, I'm the poster boy for it right now. I, I just love it. I hope I, I hope I don't I don't hope I don't ever stop. Good. Before I tell you that you're going to look great in your speedo, <laughs> I want to remind everybody that we also did a interview with uh, another one of our leading experts, Dr. Liz, mm -hmm. and she talked about the benefits of fasting. Absolutely. So even though you should go see your doctor, it's not for everybody. Fasting is a centuries old. Well, Method and every, of... every, every major religion talks about fasting. There's another, there's another aspect of that, too. But, but it has to do with ketones and ketosis, and it, there's so many benefits to it. And you combine that with uh, some exercising and some walking and stuff like that. I, I, I just think, regardless of who you are, you're watching this or whatever, if you are able to do it, if you do it, I think you will feel better. Don't already get in your head that you cannot go 16 hours without eating because you can. Right. But that, the main thing is to stay to hydrated. Is, stay hydrated, too. Yeah, the key to it is you can't just starve and binge. You right. have to eat less. I mean, it's just essentially a technique for eating less. Right. But when you that, do eat, you have to eat well. You have to eat properly. Yeah. So. And you'll feel better, and you'll want to eat better. Yeah, I still think we ought to outlaw speedos for people over forty. Really. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, where where are we getting to on this? Because we're going intermittently. <laughs> long. We like like so many of our like so many of our conversations are going intermittently long. 
Well, so, to, let me wrap it up for you. Again, I just look into intermittent fasting. If you want to lose weight, if you are motivated for whatever your reason might be, health or pride, ego, vanity, whatever it might be, look into intermittent fasting. Talk to a healthcare professional about it. Get on the get on track with it. I think you will enjoy it. And it's all part of aging in a better way and improving yourself. And that's a perfect place for me to segue into my Embrace the Boom movement. And you can find out about that at Bill Jordan, embrace the boom.com and you get this handy dandy mug and stuff. But uh, generally it's just a way that I'm hoping to empower and encourage and inspire members of the baby boomer generation. So live your life, forget your age and embrace the boom. Well, you know what? I'm inspired. And I'll, I'll drink to that. Okay. Always will. Always will. Uh, oh, wait. I'm, uh, I'm intermittently fasting from, coffee mugs. Sorry. He's mugless. He's Mug mugless. mugless. Thanks for having me on again, guys. I appreciate it. Great to Bill, see you. Thanks a lot. Take care. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.